Hi there and welcome to another episode of Plane Chasing. My name is James Menzies of J Menzies Productions. Today I've got with me Storm Chaser Eugene Thiessen. Hi Gene, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you James? No problem, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Now first, can we start off with uh, just telling us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you grew up originally? I grew up in eastern Nebraska, York County, a little town called Henderson. Uh, grew up on a farm. Uh, always interested in weather just because of being on a farm. Uh, and uh, I guess that's part of what sparked my interest. Yeah. Uh, now, did you study weather in school? Was that a th No. Uh, my only formal education in weather is the uh, segment in the training for an instrument pilot's license on weather, which is pretty extensive. Okay. So that's the only formal training I have. Okay, so basically storm chasing has been mainly a hobby for you over the years? Yes, yes it has. And how many years have you been chasing altogether? It's approaching 20. So 20 years. So yeah, formally, yeah. yeah so you, you know, it was since I decided to actually go out and do it, yeah, it's approaching 20 years. Yeah, yeah. do you ever take any, anyone chasing with you? Do, you? do you have a partner that you like to chase with sometimes? I have had a variety of people I've chased with off and on and still do. Uh, a fellow out of Amarillo area, Walt Gish, uh, Jason Castor. I chased some with uh, Chris Sanner and some other friends, uh, some, including some people in my family. Uh, if you take them family out, what do they think of it? Ah, uh, they love it. Yeah, <laughs> I have a nephew now that's just thoroughly excited about seeing his first uh, tornado on a storm chase. And just this last week, my one sister, who really hadn't shown much interest, uh, now all of a sudden says she wants to go on a storm chase. So I'm looking forward to hopefully getting her out this year. Yeah, that's going to be uh, very entertaining. Make sure you get some video of that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> So when you're chasing, uh, what's, uh, what's your favorite state to chase in, do you think? Out of all the states that you've chased in in these 20 years, which one do you enjoy the most? Be it because of road networks or visibility or scenery? Well, you know, to be honest, for different reasons, different parts. You know, like eastern Nebraska is fantastic for road networks. In terms of scenery and seeing uh, tornadoes fairly easily, the Texas Panhandle, and I've learned to love Colorado in the last couple of years, living in a place that's relatively accessible to the Eastern Plains. So I go out there chasing quite a bit now. Yeah, Colorado produces some beautiful tornadoes. Yes, it does. Knows. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, a very unique place yeah. to, to yeah. see yeah. them. Yeah. And yeah. landspouts, too. Landspouts can be really pretty tornadoes uh, yeah. sometimes. They're kind of a common occurrence, actually. Yes, Colorado. they are. You can yeah. have just your regular everyday thunderstorm out there, and boom, you get to see a landspout. So. Yeah. That's uh, another good place to see everything. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Did you always want to be a storm chaser when you were younger, or was that when, when you were growing up, or was there something else you wanted to be? Well, uh, my occupation initially, at least, was was pilot and trained for uh, flying in the bush. You know, like uh, rough strips in undeveloped areas, uh, and that I think that was kind of my goal. But I always had this interest in weather. I uh, didn't really discover storm chasing until I noticed on the internet that some people were doing it. I thought, oh, I guess I, maybe I should give that a try as well. Yeah. Uh, so it was kind of an accidental discovery. Uh, and once I discovered it and started doing it, then I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And what was, tell us what the first tornado was that you ever saw. Oh. It was a land spout. Uh, near Henderson, Nebraska, when I was in junior high, and it went by just a couple miles south of where I lived at that point. Uh, not tornado warned, there wasn't even severe weather forecast, and, and saw it happen. Uh, not terribly extensive, but I think that was the first one. Um, and then the first one I got on film, chasing myself would have been uh, up near Clarks, Nebraska. It's up east, east, northeast of Central City. I was on a supercell there that nobody else was out on, and that was one of my first chases, and that was in May 2001, something like that. It was an early chase. It wasn't yeah. the first, but an early one, and I got that one on film with almost nobody else on it. Yeah. Uh, so those were some of the first. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't think of any others immediately now as to which, which, where they might have been. I'm sure there were some others in between. But yeah. Those were the ones that I remember. Yeah. Now, did you ever have a role model growing up? 
Um, was there someone you specifically looked up to in the weather community that influenced? Yeah, influence? the 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 weather the weather people on the local television stations. I remember as a little kid watching the TV uh, channel ten out of uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Bob Taylor, his weather segment was on at the beginning of the evening news segment, mm -hmm. and he would draw the fronts out as he was talking about what was happening and right right in the temperatures as 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 he was reporting on them uh, so that would be some of the start and then there were some that followed him uh, but that first one I remember very very clearly uh, we didn't get a television till I was about no well, fifth or sixth grade in in school but once we had one I thoroughly enjoyed watching the weather at 6 p.m. and at 10 p.m. Yeah. in the evening yeah now, did you, do you have any other hobbies besides storm chasing? Is there something else that you like to do in your free time? Uh, fishing, uh, bass and crappie fishing I, I love. Uh, and in fact, I'm just off of three days fishing out in western Oklahoma with a friend. Uh, and I also enjoy photography, uh, just apart from storm chasing. I think storm chasing got me into it, but I enjoy doing landscape photography and, and some of those kinds of things. Travel. Uh, international travel especially I really enjoy. And what's, uh, what's your favorite country you visited do you think? Iceland. Iceland? Yeah. I like a lot of countries. I lived in Africa for almost 20 years in Botswana in the in southern part of Africa but I think my favorite place I've been recently is Iceland. Yeah. And why do you like Iceland so much do you think? Oh I don't know it's just so different from anywhere else I had been and the variety of landscapes I went in the winter uh, so we saw these frozen up waterfalls, the people are friendly, mm. uh, you know, Reykjavik, you can just walk around the whole city without worrying about anything, you know, even late at night. Uh, some decent architecture, there's volcanoes and glaciers yeah. and all those kinds of things, you know, the the Rift Valley yeah. uh, down by Thingvellir, uh, yeah, those are all elements of why I like it there. Yeah. Did you go and visit the volcanoes while you were there? No, didn't have an opportunity. It was a short trip in the winter. We did do the Golden Circle so we could see Hecla, for example, from uh, Gullfoss, uh, Golden Falls, yeah. uh, but uh, didn't actually get out on the glaciers or the volcanoes. I want to go back in the summertime to be able to do that. Yeah. And maybe do the circle route all the way around the island as well. Yeah, that's something I definitely want to do is visit mm -hmm. Iceland and, uh, and Norway as well and mm -hmm. go and see the Northern Lights and uh, mm -hmm. Iceland, especially for the volcanoes. I yeah. want to do a volcano tour. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just do some filming and take pictures. And, uh, yeah. you know, maybe I keep watching and when they're going to say there's an interruption or it's going to happen, I'm going to book a ticket and go. <laughs> yep, yeah. yep, definitely. That's a good time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Not too close, don't mind. No, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now, when you're chasing, um, are there any um, uh, food places you like to stop at specifically? Are there any places that is like a tradition for you to stop and eat at or somewhere that you've discovered that's had amazing food? And I like to ask this question on each of my episodes because it's informative to other chasers out there so they can <laughs> stop and try out these places <laughs> because you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very much a foodie. As yeah, you can tell, yeah, so. I, I am too. You can yeah. see. Uh, you know, without being t specific in terms of chains, um, I have found some of the diners in the small towns all over the, the Chaser Alley uh, to have some of the very best food. Um, just recently, oh, was that last year, I was out on a trip, it was actually a photography trip with Jesse Risley, and we yeah. stopped at a little diner in Scott City, Kansas that just had fantastic food. The burgers were some of the best I'd ever had. Do you remember the name of that diner? At all? No, I just know it's <laughs> north. Uh, as you're going on the highway north out of town, uh, north of the, the main drag east and west, it's on the west side of the road. But I don't remember the name of it, but really good hamburgers. And I think Jesse had a steak and said it was really good too. Uh, that's one. Uh, there is a little place called, I think it's called El Dos de Oros, a little... Uh, Mexican-American place on the yeah. south side of Pratt. Tiny little place, not much larger than, than uh, say, a, a person's garage. And yeah. very, very good food. Yeah. And maybe seats 15 people. 
uh, fantastic food. So those are some, those are what I look for. I prefer those over the chain. Yeah. You should ask me which ones I don't like, but I don't want to besmirch any particular chain. So I won't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there's a nice list of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a different uh, variety of reasons. Yeah. Now, when you've, uh, when you've been chasing the 20 years you've been chasing is mm -hmm. uh, what has been your most hair raising experience? Like what has been the closest you've ever come to a tornado that made you nervous, so to speak? Um, I know everyone says El Reno 2013 because that really was a unique situation. Yeah, and that one didn't make me nervous till after because I thought if it had kept going on its southeast track where I was set up, I would not have been able to get away given the traffic. Yeah. Uh, but given what it did, I was perfectly safe. I was within a mile or two of the southern edge of it. Uh, but uh, in terms of hair raising, um, have gotten kind of sideswiped by the outer winds a couple times, one south of uh, uh, Kinsley, Kansas, yeah. and blew us across the road uh, a couple times. We weren't sure. Initially, I told my chase partner that, oh, it's just RFD, nothing to worry about. And then it happened again where we got pushed across the road and then we pulled pulled down off the road about a mile further south after we were clear and immediately opened the doors we could hear the waterfall sound. <laughs> uh, and then looked back, yeah, and there it was. Uh, um, another one happened while riding uh, with the late Jim, Jim Leonard. Uh, we got overrun by a weak tornado in Stigler, uh, Oklahoma. And that was the first time that kind of happened and I remember the the pit in my stomach thinking, okay, no idea how strong this thing is and we are going to get overrun. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, in the end, we were okay. He went into yeah. hurricane mode and put us in the safest possible situation so we were out of the wind. And it was only an EF0, I think, 90 mile an hour winds or so. So it wasn't an issue. And then there was another time, um, that was the day after Greensburg. Uh, that was a high risk day as well. Yeah. Like two, two days back to back in the yeah. same area. And this was approaching late. We had started chasing early that day. Walt and I, I was chasing with Walt Gish that day. We were both uh, fairly tired. Yeah. And a tornado was reported near Wilson, Kansas. Yeah. And we were driving north and we miscalculated our position and didn't realize that we were much closer to where it was. We couldn't see it. It was rain wrapped from our perspective. As a lot of them were that day, actually. Yeah. yeah. And, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden out ahead of us, the visibility went from more than a mile to less than a quarter of a mile with wind across and our vehicle got hit by some debris. Um, again, it took a few power lines down. I don't know that it was anything significant, but those were some of the ones that were a little bit hair raising. No, yeah. more, more the yeah. ones that stick, stick in your memory. Yeah, yeah. I said some things on, on, on the video that I normally don't say. <laughs> Yeah, some colorful <laughs> language, I'm sure. Yeah, not well for me, powerful. Maybe yeah. not as powerful as some others, but for me, yeah. 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 So you were telling me earlier that you were, um, you were a pastor for a while. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I served most recently until the end of October, a small Mennonite church out in, in uh, rural Kansas and uh, served here in Oklahoma as well and then overseas in Botswana. Uh, with some of the independent churches there, uh, kind of on a collegial relationship uh, and helping helping the folks in those churches with some theological education. Mm -hmm. And they were helping persons like me with learning the art of pastoral ministry. Uh, so Mennonite pastor, Mennonite Church USA is the, the denomination. Yeah. Now, so where do you see yourself in, in 10 years from now? Do you see yourself still storm chasing or... Is this something you might give up eventually, you know, with it getting so busy out there every year? No. Nope, I won't give it up. You can always find places where there's nobody. Yeah. Even within the last couple of years, especially later in the season on the high plains, I've been on storms where there was nobody else yeah. that I could see. You know, other people were on the storms, but it wasn't mm -hmm. the big crowds. I will sometimes intentionally on a high risk day where there's, um, or even a moderate risk where there's, an obvious target, I'll take the less obvious one yeah. uh, to stay out of the crowds. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I guess I don't mind it all that much unless I'm in a situation where the traffic makes it impossible to get away from the storm safely when you need to. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't mind the crowds. Uh, 
but that that part of being able to get away if you need to that's the problem yeah exactly yeah yeah okay so yeah no big deal with that for me and i won't give up storm chasing uh, i'll see if i can find a way to do it even in a wheelchair if that happens <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> might have to put a motor on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you know a vehicle where you can get in and out and all that kind of stuff or find somebody that'll drive me around yeah. who knows so it's a real passion then yeah i thoroughly enjoy it um you know i recognize the limitations of you know needing to do the stuff that i need to do in terms of family and work and all that sort of thing yeah. so if there's a great setup and i have to work and i can't go and there are great tornadoes yeah i enjoy seeing what other people have found but i don't i don't really get upset having missed them yeah. um because because i've learned how to balance it with other yeah. things in my life have you ever uh, have you ever blown off family and friends to go on a chase no 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 i haven't I, I in fact i've more often intentionally blown off a chase to be with family and friends that's unique because I know a lot of people will, <laughs> will blow off their friends or family plans yeah. to go on a chase. You know, maybe it has something to do with, you know, my age being in the, you know, the latter third of life. Mm. You know, so family becomes more important. And yeah. I've also been on enough storms in 20 years and seen enough tornadoes that my attitude is basically, oh, there's always another storm. There's mm -hmm. always another tornado. Yeah. I find myself starting to think more and more like that these days because I have, like you said, I've been doing it a long time as well. So yeah. Some, some yeah. days I'm just like, you know, I'm just going to let everybody else, you know, have their fun and see yeah. the storm and I'll just watch and see what pictures yeah. they upload and videos later on. Yeah. So, but then there's a small part of me is just like, mm, yeah, I wish I'd been out there for that yeah. one. But, you know, there'll always be another storm. There'll yeah. always be another day. Whereas, yeah. like you said, you know, in, as you get older, you know, family and friends may not always be there. Yeah, yeah. So, that becomes much more important. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Gene, um, we've got this video here. Tell me about this uh, this tornado that we've got on the screen here. Which day was this, and what year? This was 2016, May 25. Uh, this would be the 90 minute uh, EF4 that tracked from about Niles, Kansas, to just east of Chapman, Niles, Chapman. We chased it uh, approximately an hour out of that. 90 minutes we were there from the beginning and and broke off the chase uh at enterprise uh before it hit chapman because we weren't sure if we were going to run into the damage track yeah uh slow moving uh impressive monster now it's uh this tornado here was this at the, this was kind of in the early stages of it wasn't it? yeah this was maybe five minutes after it had touched down um quite unexpected uh this kind of a tornado that day the uh the setup was one that would say okay you're going to have a long-lived supercell with some brief small tornadoes uh this particular uh tornado was quite unexpected in that regard uh, i think what happened is the supercell latched onto a boundary and and moved along the boundary there had been a brief tornado earlier near M minneapolis uh yeah. that day the first one on this particular storm and it lasted just a couple minutes and that we figured we'd see several of those yeah we did not expect this so this was a day very similar to may 28th in 2013 which was the bennington kansas yeah. tornado yeah. yeah yeah except i think bennington i was not on that one but i think it it was almost stationary for uh, a longer period of time this one kept moving but very slowly yeah and this is the, like you said it was on the ground for 90 minutes yeah but so. it moved what 25 miles maybe so it you know it was quite um yeah. it, it was it was it was quite impressive very easy to film in that regard just simply because it was coming slow oh here's somebody standing in front of it yeah <laughs> that's what happens when you're chasing with other people yeah <laughs> you edit those segments out when you're editing yeah. video yeah. <laughs> No, because uh, yeah here it almost does look like the bennington tornado yeah yeah I mean, and it just kept getting larger and larger and as it got closer um just incredibly or, impressive uh, bennington the revenge i like to call it <laughs> yeah yeah i was afraid those people when they pulled up they were going to stop right in front of my camera they didn't or they didn't fortunately that's lucky i've had that happen before yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's not not the nicest of things to happen no it isn't um, so but yeah this is a this is a fairly violent tornado going on here right now as well yeah yeah and i love how you've captured the actual motion of the storm 
everything being drawn into it as well, which is uh, that's a really, really, really beautiful shot there. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I guess I don't consider myself a great videographer, but this was one of those where uh, with the slow movement, I was able to set it up, camera up on a tripod and just let it go and then watch what was happening. And as, you know, as it moved out of the frame, you know, adjust the camera again. Yeah. Um, I tend to, uh, for the sake of editing purposes, I tend to shoot in two minute segments. Mm -hmm. Two minutes, shut it off, start another one right away. So there's a couple, couple second gap there, but just for editing purposes so that it, you don't have this big long file that you've got to try to work through. Yeah, um, yeah, I can understand that. But was, was this the longest, longest live tornado you've seen? No, I think probably Hallam was. Hallam, yeah. yeah. I, I think because we saw that one from beginning till uh, didn't follow it quite all the way out to where where it ended, but till well, till well, well east of Hallam in Wilbur, Nebraska, we followed it. Uh, you know, after the first ten minutes or so, there wasn't much to be seen. Yeah. Uh, looking back at some of the video, there were times where uh, where you could see just barely through the rain, you could see the edges of it. Yeah. Uh, but we followed it uh, pretty well. Uh, pretty well all the way. But yeah, that's a pretty big tornado then. Yeah. yeah, it is, and it just kept getting larger and larger and more violent with with time. Um, yeah, very, very impressive. At this point, as it approached us, uh, we actually moved down the road to make sure we were clear of it. It probably would have crossed less than half a mile from our initial setup point. Yeah. And I, I just, I know these large ones too well. I generally don't want to be that close. This one, having watched it for a considerable time, um, yeah, you're gonna okay. I hadn't watched it for a considerable time. Uh, it wasn't putting out many satellites, so I felt pretty safe being within a mile or so. Um, it it uh, that was that wasn't an issue. I have I have seen satellite tornadoes nearly take out unwary storm chasers as far as three miles from the main tornado. Uh, at this point, we could start to hear it. Uh, it was quite loud, although later on near Enterprise, which I don't have film of, but on the interstate, it was so loud you could just feel the rumbling in your gut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. That's right. That's fairly common with large wedge, wedge style yeah. tornadoes. You can usually hear them and feel them pretty. <coughs> yeah, I was surprised when we, we pulled up near Enterprise and the thing was north of the road and ripping up trees and it rolled down the window. And yeah, it was a rumble that you heard, but you also just felt it in your body. Yeah. Um, here it was just it, it was just one that you heard. Yeah. Um, and we were, oh, at this point, I suppose, slightly less than a mile from it. This is basically standard. Yeah. Now this shot that you took is absolutely beautiful. I mean, you can see the the uh, the back of the mezzo there is just an incredible image. Yeah. So and that's uh, that's something you don't see very often. That that defined that, yeah. that giant wall going up there is just. Yeah, and the rain curtains moving around the inflow. Yeah. Um, the inflow jet. You see it here too. The inflow jet yep, coming the from train, behind yep. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just just absolutely incredible this is where it was crossing the road and we could hear it quite quite clearly as it was doing that yeah after it crossed the road then it pretty well wrapped up in rain and and we didn't sight it again until we got north of abilene yeah um but yeah, yeah incredible storm yeah. absolutely incredible uh, yeah well gene thank you very much for coming on the show i appreciate it and that was a great video to watch as well so, but uh, appreciate it. I'm yeah. glad to do it for you. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, and good luck with this season that's coming up. Now we're just about to start getting going. Here. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we shall we'll, see. Yeah. We shall see. Uh, I know people always try to predict the seasons, and I'm always of the line uh, of the line. Well, let's just see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. And as always, be safe. Yes. And uh, we'll see you out under the mezzo, I guess. You bet. Absolutely. Hope so. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Plane Chasing. Be sure to tune in next time. Thank you.